fresh produce doesn't have a long shelf life. That can pose a challenge for the people marketing things like lettuce, carrots, and apples. One local grocer has been re uh, nationally recognized for putting in the work to make his produce section pop. New this morning, Becky Farr joins us live with more on what it takes to keep a produce department in its prime. Tim, Devin Hoffer is one of 25 produce managers across the country and, the, and Canada who were named Produce Managers of the Year. I asked him what he takes the most pride in when it comes to that title and to his work, and he said it's actually his team that he has to thank for staying up to date with all of the information necessary. And it takes a lot more to have a good produce section than just a pretty looking shelf. More and more people are eating fresh fruits and vegetables. Devin Hoffer says that's great, and it's his job to keep that trend alive. With almost two decades of experience, he's been doing pretty well, earning the title Produce Manager of the Year from the United Fresh Produce Association. But how do we t tell the story best to the customer on what are the health benefits to this, how do you use it, and you know when is it season and availability? With little to no packaging, that's not the easiest task. Plus, people in general are in much more of a hurry. So having fresh, convenient, and high-quality food at an affordable price is always the goal. There are so many new products coming to the market right now. For example, cotton candy grapes. The demand is huge, but vineyards just can't keep up to supply them year-round. For instance, Mexico produces cotton candy grapes in May and June, so you'll find them in your local store then but they could disappear for several weeks until the California crop comes in. Overall, there are more than 200 produce varieties that change with the seasons, not to mention... Our organics have really made strides in the past several years. That's why Hoffer has to pay close attention to which foods benefit the most from being grown organically. Organic onions, potatoes, just to how these vegetables are grown, there's not nearly as many pesticide residues and things like that in those items as, as berries, which absorb much more of the things in the rain and in the air, which kind of go right into the fruit. And have you heard of the Clean 15 or Dirty Dozen lists? Because they identify which products have the most or the least pesticide residue. I'll put a link to them online on our website, mynd.now.com, so you can check them out. But Tim, I'm going to put you to the test right now. Can you think of a fruit that makes the Dirty Dozen list? That means it absorbs a little bit more pesticides if not grown organically. And they're one of my favorite things to put on ice cream or have with like a chocolate bar or something. Hmm. Uh, you know, so it's got to be a berry, you know, strawberry or raspberry, blueberry. Stop me it's when I'm It's raspberries. Right. Okay. But actually, you know what? All three of those make the list. It's oh. a lot of berries. Interesting. Okay, we'll have to check that out at mynd.now.com. Thanks, Becky. We appreciate it.